Hello everyone, welcome to this video on the syllogisms concept brought to you by Learning Made Easy team, a team of IIM grads in association with an e-learning partner, GTQ Get to the Top. If you are watching this video on the YouTube channel, make sure that you check out our full length courses available for free at gtcube.com slash store where you will get to watch these videos as part of the course and also get to practice a lot of questions on these concepts. So let's get started. So before we get into syllogisms, we need to have a decent understanding of Venn diagrams. So we don't need to know a lot about it. Uh, we'll just talk about very basic things which would help you, uh, you know, solve these questions. So first, let's try to understand basics of set. Uh, let's say that there are two sets for me. Set A has numbers like 1, 2, 3, 5, 6 and 8. Okay, and set B has a list of numbers like 2, 3, 4, 6, 9, and 10. Right, almost 6 numbers in both sets. And let's assume there's a universal set which has a numbers from 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on up to 10. Right, that's basically 10 numbers. Let's assume this is my entire universe. So if I want to put all of this into one diagram, generally the way we see is this. We first saw a rectangle, first we draw a rectangle to put the entire universe in it. That is every number, because we are talking about numbers here, let's say that I am putting every number can that is considered to be part of this universe is you know put in this entire rectangle. Now there is a set A which has elements 1, 2, 3, 5, 6 and 8 which are not, which are part of the universe. Yes, all of these 6 numbers are part of these 10 numbers, that's a universe, but not everything, right. So just a part of it. So I can draw it using a circle. We generally put, you know, using a circle. So this is set A. So that means this has 1, 2, 3, 5, 6 and 8. Right. If I want to only put set B, I will draw a circle for set B which has 2, 3, 4, 6, 9 and 10. You know, the remaining elements like 1 and, you know, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 8. These are the four numbers which are, you know, not part of the set B are technically expected to be the outside part, right? This is the area. That is how I, you know, put a circle and a triangle rectangle to put the universe and then the respective sets in it. Now, let's say I am talking about both A and B, right? So, I would see something like this. Why would we see something like this two circles which are overlapping each other because they have common numbers like 2, 3 and 6, right? There are three numbers which are common. So 2, 3 and 6 would be this common area that is this part. Whereas this is set A. So part of it is this part which is 2, 3 and 6. The other let's say this is 1, 5 and 8. Similarly for set B, 2, 3, 6 are part of it. The 4, 9 and 10 would be the non-overlapping part which is 4, 9 and 10. Right and then obviously the remaining numbers like, uh, what would be the remaining numbers? I think there is be only one number which is not part of it which is in the universe. 7 is not part of set A or set B which would come in this you know, zone. This entire zone is represented by 7. Or 7 is represented by this entire zone. And right? that's how you know this is work. So this is called, what is this zone called? intersection a intersection b that is the common elements in both would be represented by a intersection b zone and this entire zone okay let me use a different color uh, let me first talk about a intersection b is the green area which is basically this part right which is basically 2 3 and 6 let's say I am talking about A union B that is A or B. Right? This is A and B basically I have to pick common in both. This one even there is an element in one of these two sets I will count that. That is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9 and 10. You see both I mean for example 5 is not part of B but part of A that is still counted. Right? 2 is part of both that is counted as 2 ones. So basically all the elements that are either in, present in one of these two is counted to be a valid element in the set. That's why A union B that will basically come as this entire zone which is basically all of it right that is A union B 
so that's what you know this one two three nine elements are just a would be just this circle right which is what we have already done one two three five six eight and similarly for b alone we already know that is two three four six nine and ten so this are the basics that you need to know you know what is the common area and you know some parts are repeat you know overlapping some of them are not and that's the only thing that you need to know we don't need to even understand the intersection union completely uh, that's good enough for us to get into the syllogisms so for the syllogisms there will be four statements which are the common statements that we get to see there are much more beyond it if we get to slightly advanced this one we will restrict to you know in the relatively basics and easier side of the questions which are good enough to you know look at first statement is all a's are b's right so what do you mean by that so there is a and there is b every element in a is b so the diagram generally looks like this a is this and b is something like this right so this entire you know area is for b and this is small element a which is completely inside b because all a's are b every element in a if i say a is 1 2 3 right what is b 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 let's assume that is something like this every element in a is part of b so all a's are you know b's there is no way that there is any element which is not part of element you know set b that's why we have to draw a figure like this now this is an important thing that you should be able to draw so that you know you can actually understand and answer the question so whenever you see all something or something right all a's are b's are all pigs are animals right so that is basically that is the figure that you should draw right then no a is b right that is like none of the element in a is b you know earlier we saw all elements of a are b is part of b here it's basically saying no a is b we generally draw like this there is no connection between a and b not even one element is overlapping between these two so that is if i have a like 1 2 3 3 and if I have B as 6, 7, 8, C, none of these elements are you know overlapping there is no common element between these two so that's why this statement is drawn like this in the figure like no A is B there is no connection between them that's why you put a cross it's okay even if you just draw them as two circles different circles that's that's good enough there's just two you know put it that's a habit some people have but that's completely fine so you can just put it like this then the third statement some a's are b's so here i'm saying some a's are b's so that is there is an overlap not everything maybe but you know you know there is a bit of problem in the interpretation of this try to understand this like this this is basically saying at least one element of a is part of b is present in b otherwise right this is the only thing you need then you can say that this is correct let's say there is a situation like this a is for example 1 2 and 3 right b could be 3 4 and 5 so what is the common element 3 so there is at least one element which is common which is good enough or i could have a situation like 1 2 3 3 b is 2 3 5 6 7 7 here i have two common elements so i would have 2 comma 3 or i could also have situation like this a is 1 2 3 and b is 1 2 3 4 5 6 see this is like still this is this is correct according to the statement some a's that is at least one element of a that's basically all a's are part of b which is what we have seen here right the statement one was saying all a's are b's whereas here we are seeing this situation is also looking exactly similar to all a's are b's right so just understand that when i say some a's are b's this is also a valid uh, thing to count this is also a valid thing to count and this is also a possibility right there could be a chance that all the elements of a are part of b so the statement could still be written as some a's are b's it's just that i cannot say that if i say some pigs are pink does not mean all pigs are pink no this is not always case this is a possible case 
right? This could also be a possible case. If there are only three pigs in the whole world, maybe two of the three pigs are pink. One is black or some other color, right? Or maybe just one pig is pink, the remaining are black in color or some other color like red, blue, whatever, right? So just understand some A's or B's is a valid, the only thing you can interpret is this, that at least one element of A is present in B. It could be all, it could be majority of them, or it could be just one. That is still fine. If there is no overlap, then obviously this is not a statement you will use. You will rather use a no A is B, which we have seen already. So just keep this in mind, the possibility, you know, there are multiple possibilities based on the given statement. We'll talk about that a bit, you know, uh, more a bit later. So don't worry about that. Some A's are not B's. So this one should be interpreted like this. At least one element in A is not present in B. Right, exactly reverse of uh, what we have seen earlier. At least one element is present in B, some A's are B's. So that is if I have a case like this, 1, 2, 3, B is 2, 3, 5, 6. See, at least there's one element in A which is not part of B. So which means the diagram would look like this. You know, one element is 1. 2, 3 are part of the overlap, 5, 6 are inside B and whatever. So there is at least one element which is not over, you know, uh, in the set B. So that's why this is correct statement for this. Sometimes even this is a possibility. 1, 2, 3 I see, right? And there could be 1, 5, 7, 8. There is only one element which is overlapping, right? There are multi more than one element which are not present in B, which is fine. There is no, nothing wrong in that or we could also see situation like this, B is 5, 6, 7. Here none of the elements in A are present in B, right? Which is similar to second statement, right? No A is B is like how there is no overlap. So even this is an acceptable case for some A's are not B's. As I said, at least one element is not present. All the elements are not present in B that is still accepted. That is still a valid case for this some A's are not B's. Or maybe there is just one element which is not right uh, present in set B. Or there could be two or more which is which are not all. You know all of these are accepted situations for this. Okay, Some A's are not B's. Just do not ex exclude this because we already have some other statement saying no A is B or something. Understand that this is also accepted. If you ever see a situation like this, this is also accepted for this statement. Right. Just try to understand. Just stay with us a bit longer. Once we start solving problems, you'll get a good understanding of this. Don't worry if it's not coming out very clear right now. Just stay with us for some more time. You'll get a good clarity on this. So there are something called like definite cases and probable cases. Okay, let me talk about this. All A's are B's. Right. Let's first. This is the first statement we've seen. Right. What would an ideal diagram look like? A is this and B is this. So from this, what is one sure shot conclusion I can say? I can say that some B's are A's. This is a sure shot conclusion, okay? Definite conclusion. There is no way this one is wrong if this is true, okay? If this is true, if statement one is true, then this has to be true. There is no way this is wrong. What am I saying? Some B's are A's. Obviously, all A's are B's. So this is also B. So some of these B's should be A, right? So what is this? If I say A is 1 and 2 and B is 1, 2, 3 and 4. So that is when I would say all A's are B's. So some B's are A's. So that is true. There is no way this could be wrong. There are some probable, probable conclusions as well. You know, that is, you know, in some special cases, this could also happen, but not always type. What are those? See, all A's are B's could also be seen like this. This is A. Let me use a different color here. And exactly this is B as well. That is A is 1 and 2. B is also 1 and 2. Right? So all A's are B's which is satisfied. Right? All A's are B's. So I could also say all B's are A's as well. This is a probable one. Not always but in this case this is correct. But in this case, it is wrong because all B's are not A's here, right? Because 3 and 4 are not present in A. So all B's are A's is not always correct. But 
it could be in the situation like this where a and b are exactly same sets then all a's are b's is correct and automatically all b's are a's is also correct but then as i said this is not an always case this is just a probable case you just have to understand depending on how the question statements are you have to mark the options yes correct as sometimes maybe not as sometimes right so you might will get to that once we see some questions but just keep in mind there are always things like definite and probable cases which you have to understand and appreciate so that you don't miss some cases and mark the wrong options so similarly let's take another example when i say some b some a's are b's okay let's say so that will look like this right a and b there are some common elements in it some a's are b's so a definite conclusion is some b's are a's right if some a's are b's so some b's have to be a's right there's no way this is going to be wrong if this is true like if i have 1 3 6 even if there is only one common element 5 7 some a's are b's then technically some b's are a's that's no way that's going to be a wrong thing but there can be some probable conclusions which would be true in some cases not always for example let's say i say that can i conclude that see you see this figure this look like some a are not b's is this a correct statement according to you looks like a correct one because you know this one you know these these elements some a's are b's so basically the i can always find some zone which is not related to b so some a's are not b's which is looking like a correct one but not always why as i said some a's are b's is true if at least one element at least one element is in b right so if a is 1 and 2 if b is 1 2 3 4 4 this is still correct at least one element is in b yes 1 and 2 but this is a one extreme case where all the elements of a are part of b so the figure would look like this right this is a with 1 and 2 the remaining 3 4 are here this is b so there are only two elements which are so is this correct some a's are not b's no why because every element in a is present in b so some a's are b's i cannot always say that all case is observed that is like every element in a is observed in b but this is also a possibility in this possible situation i cannot say some a's are not b's so that's why it is not a definite conclusion but this is definitely a definite conclusion any extreme case i can take some b's are a's yes that is correct some b so 1 and 2 are a so that is definitely correct so i can say it's always correct so you have to be careful while you mark the options you have to mark only the options which are 100% correct unless you see words in the options conclusion statements like could be can be you know or maybe something like which is giving you a probable situation if it is saying this could be true for some cases then yes you have to also look for the probable and mark the probable ones as well if it is saying like a normal statement then if i say some a's are not b's you should not mark it if i say some a's could be not b's or there is a possibility that some a's are not b's then yes this is a correct one but if it is simply saying some a's are not b's you should only mark it if it is true for all the cases which is not that what we are seeing so that's why i should not mark it right still a bit or uh, maybe lot of confusion it's okay let's get to the questions and you'll get to you know understand this so the questions the syllogism simple syllogism questions would be like this below some statements are given you will get to see some set of statements 2 3 4 followed by some conclusions these are the conclusions you have to consider the statements to be true even if they seem to be at variance from commonly known facts right see it doesn't matter if it fact or not let's say no vehicles are bikes this is a wrong statement if you look at it in general because bikes are also under the category of vehicles so why would we say no vehicles are bikes doesn't matter don't try to use your brain just try to use these words as simple alphabets like you know a b b and c that's it doesn't matter what they write here they write my name your name or someone else it doesn't matter how they would relate to the things in the real world don't use your brain on that element only use your brain in looking at a s b s b c s and then trying to draw the diagram and see which of the statements are correct or not correct that's it 
and that's what they say it by even if they seem to be variants at common from commonly known facts don't you know try to use the general knowledge you have to decide which of the given conclusions if any follow from the given statements based on these statements you have to say which one of these conclusions are both of them also as well could be true or false which is what this, only one is true only two is true neither one or two is true both of them are true you know something like this is what follows follow is what they say right so now let's draw the diagram right all cars are vehicles so if you remember all we saw this right all cars are vehicles clear no vehicles are bikes so no a or b or no b or c we, we drew like this right vehicles are bikes so i put bikes here and there is no connection between that this is what the diagram looks like after writing these two together right so it's saying no cars are jeeps you see this is sometimes a trap they'll set jeeps is not used anywhere here right don't try to consider jeeps are vehicles so maybe yes maybe no no nope. don't try any of those things jeeps is a new word it's not given here so it's nothing to do with it so jeeps is like a d no cars are jeeps i don't know where d is it could be here it could be here it could be here it could be outside so i cannot say that no cars are jeeps is correct always nope it could be if i think that jeeps is here or jeeps is here but maybe jeeps are could be even here as a overlap we don't know so i cannot always confidently say that this is a correct conclusion so i cannot confidently say this is a wrong no cars are bikes this is correct right cars are here which are part of vehicles there is no way that cars and bikes will have any overlap right because vehicles no vehicles are bikes all cars are vehicles so vehicles is this entire thing cars are anyway part of vehicles so there is no way there is any relation between these two so this is always a correct statement so only two follows that's what you need to do right so let's look at the next one so this is slightly complicated with three statements right we have three statements and three conclusions that's it so some pens are pencils so i have pens i have pencils some pencils are erasers see i can draw erasers like this but i can also draw erasers like this i just need to have a little bit of overlap with pencils right i might i can actually kind now the way i've drawn erasers and pens have no relationship this is possible i mean this is a correct diagram as well or i can also have a diagram like pens here pencils here and i could have something like erasers here where there are some elements of common elements for pencils and erasers pens and erasers all three of them together it can you know there are multiple possibilities but always try to draw a diagram like this where i'm trying to you know make it a minimal case that is less and less things are overlapping then you can always look at it and try to see if there is any possibility for something else to happen right then some erasers are sharpeners so again i'll go here i won't see any i don't try to overlap anywhere else so this is sharpeners right that's it so this is what i've drawn this is one of the possibility not the all this is not the only case okay have that clarity that's important some sharpeners are pens see i can draw a diagram like this that is pens are here pencils are here erasers are here and then i can also draw sharpeners like this so some erasers are sharpener so now some sharpeners are pens this looks like a correct but this is not a correct thing because even if i can draw one situation like this right where i am satisfying all the given conditions right and i can prove this to be wrong then this is wrong i will only tick conclusion as a correct conclusion if irrespective of whatever the way i draw the diagrams by agreeing to all of these statements if i can get this correct then only i have to draw if then only i have to accept i can draw this is another possibility where you know all these overlaps makes me some sharpness are pens right which makes me feel that okay i should mark it but no each and every diagram possible you can think of should satisfy you this you should rather you know your mindset should be in such a way that i should prove these to be wrong conclusions despite all my efforts if i cannot prove them wrong then i'll mark them as correct right i can clearly prove here that it's wrong because sharpness and pens have no overlap so that's why this is wrong some pencils are sharpness again not necessary pencils are here and sharpness are here again nope some erasers are pens some erasers are pens obviously it's again not a possible i mean it's again not overlapping so again this is wrong so i will say none of them follows 
right as i said i can draw some possible diagrams in such a way that you know all the conclusions are shown by drawing in this way but that is just one of the possibility as i said i'll only mark the conclusion to be correct if they are satisfied in all the possible diagrams i can draw but this diagram alone is good enough for me to you know put all these options as wrong so that's why it's very clear that i would not mark you know any of those conclusions as correct conclusion now let's look at this some leaves are apples right so there are leaves and there are apples so some leaves are apples no apple is a, is an egg so no apple is an egg so i can draw like this or they could also be here right as as in, as in i see connection between leaves and apple x this is just a possibility i am just drawing as i said always try to draw like this which would be the worst possible case with no minimal overlap then it should help you to solve the question easier so all apples are leaves all apples are leaves not correct right because there is a chance that some apples would be there right as i said some leaves or apples could also be drawn like this that is leaves are here apples are here so all all leaves are apples sort of it so that's why i could also mark something like this but this is not always case right this is also an acceptable case and this is not agreeing to this all apples are not leaves so that's why we will not mark it some eggs are leaves in this probable diagram eggs and leaves is overlap so you might think that is a correct one but in this case where i put it to the extreme right there is no link between eggs and leaves so so that is denying it so i would not mark it i said it should be always true which is not the case i am seeing that's why this is wrong some leaves are not x some leaves are not x see this even in this case i have some elements which are not you know leaves some x are not leaves and here also there is no connection so some leaves are not x basically means at least one element at least one element in leaves should not be in should not be x right that's what we need right at least one if even all of the leaves are not x is still accepted so whatever the way i draw i can never ever you know get these leaves link to x why because these leaves are part of apples and apples and leaves have no link that's what it says and no apple is egg so these links which are apples and leaves together will not be x so there will be at least one element in this common zone which is not linked so that's why this is a correct statement doesn't matter how i draw this x right here none of the leaves and x have any connection so at least one element yes all the leaves are not linked to x so that's why that is correct even in the worst case i can draw something like this okay let's say all the x are here which is outside apples but everything inside leaves still there are some leaves which are not x so that's why some leaves are not x is correct all x are leaves not correct again right i see x here leaves here all x are not leaves right so this is good enough case for me to cross it off so only conclusion 3 is the correct one as i said right be careful on this some leaves are not x i can always prove whatever the way I draw the diagram as as much as many attempts you can make as you want or maybe try it in any way you want you would never ever able to be defy with one diagram this statement i can always show you that there is at least one element in the leaves which is not part of the x right so that's why i'll mark this as the correct one so the other variety of questions you could see in syllogisms is this basically they give you statements like a b c d e what you need to choose a correct option which indicates a valid argument that is where the third statement is a conclusion from the drawn from the preceding two statements i should take the two statements as the statements and based on this i should be able to mark the third one as the conclusion which should be true in all the cases right the easier approach is they have they will generally give you the option so just check them option by option and you will get the answer right so let's say in the state option a say c and d are my statements and a is the conclusion so what is c all sweets are tasty so all sweets are tasty and what is e no apple is tasty so tasty and apple have no connection right what is a apples are not sweets right apples have no connection with tasty so and sweets are sub part of tasty so apples and sweets have no connection so apples are not sweets is correct so this is a correct conclusion i mean with the diagram c and e 
I can say that A is always true. So that's why C A is a correct order. Let me show other options as well, right? B D C. What is B? Some apples are sweet. So some apples are sweet. So this is the common overlap, right? What is a D? Some apples are not tasty. Some apples are not tasty. I'm doing like this. I can do many other ways, right? I can also overlap here. Some apples and are not tasty, etc. Some apples are not tasty. So these are the tasty apples and these are the not tasty apples. So that is fine. So what is the conclusion? See, I'm saying all sweets are tasty, right? In this diagram, I'm not getting all sweets being tasty, right? So this is not a correct conclusion. So this is not a correct thing. So yes, I can draw things like this. Okay, apples and sweets. Some apples are sweets. Some apples are not tasty. I can draw it like this. So these are tasty. Some apples are tasty. Are not tasty. So these are the apples which are not tasty. And I can here see that all sweets are tasty. This is just a probable diagram, but this is also acceptable diagram based on given things. Just because I see one possibility, I won't mark that option. As I said, right? It should be true for all the diagrams that I can draw, which agree to the given statements. This is also a true diagram as per the given statements, but this is not agreeing to the conclusion, so I will not mark it. C B D. C all sweets are tasty, so I will start with this. All sweets are tasty. What is B? Some apples are sweet. Some apples are sweet, so I can draw something like this, or I can draw something like this, right? So some apples are sweet, but all the apples are are tasty. Or I could also draw a bigger circle, which says that some apples are sweet. That is this overlap. There are some apples which are tasty, and there are some apples which are not sweet and not tasty, right? What is D? Some apples are not tasty. Some apples are not tasty. You see this? In this diagram, I'm getting some apples are not tasty, but in this diagram, all the apples are tasty, right? So this probable diagram gives me this seems to be a correct option, C B D. But this probable diagram is agreeing to given both C B and B. All sweets are tasty, yes. Then some apples are sweets, yes. This is some apples are sweet part, but then the remaining apples are also part of tasty circle. So I cannot say some apples are not tasty. This is also wrong. Right. As I said, even for one case, if I can disprove the conclusion, then I'll cross it off. I will never ever use that. No E A C. No apple is tasty. E is saying no apple is tasty. That's the first statement. So no link between A and T. A is saying apples are not sweet. So apples are not sweet. Again, there's no link between apples are not sweet. It could be that sweet and tasty also linked in such a way. I can draw no in this way also, like something like. Like this, right? Apples and sweets are not linked, but there is overlap between sweets and tasty. What is C? All sweets are tasty, right? Not necessary, right? In this diagram, they are not. In this diagram, they are not. I can draw a case where all sweets are part of tasty, and there is no link between sweets and tasty. Yes, but not always. So this is also wrong conclusion. There is no way that you will be able to draw a diagram based on C and D and prove that A is wrong. A will be always be correct. That's why C A is the correct option for this question, right? As I said. Your your idea of solving this question should be in such a way that draw the diagram with minimal overlaps, right? So that I am always trying to think of worst possible situation, right? And your idea of selecting the conclusions which are correct needs to be in such a way that your whole mindset should be trying to prove them wrong. Try your best to prove them wrong so that I will not select that option. Despite all your effort, you could not prove them wrong. Then yes, all the possible diagrams are giving me this conclusion as correct. Then I will mark the conclusion as correct. That's how you should solve these syllogism questions, right? So thank you for watching this video. Uh, if you're watching this video in the YouTube channel, make sure you check out our full-length courses available for free at gtcube.com/store, where you'll get to watch these videos as part of the course and also get to practice a lot of questions on these concepts that would help you to understand these concepts better and also get a good practice. Also, do like our partners Facebook page, facebook.com/gtcube3. we are coming up with a lot of content that would help you in your preparation we are come we'll come up with all the notifications over there so don't miss them so do like the partners facebook page so thank you for watching this video and let's meet in the next video